Hey, man, like... I'm a guy who likes to work on my car. I like to take it apart and put it back together. Crazy, man. What makes a man do this? Today I'd like to take a closer look at the work of photographer Stephen Shaw. The general response to his photographs is either something like, mm, that's boring, anyone could do it, or you get reactions like this. The Wall Street International magazine stated that Shaw is one of the most important and influential photographers of the last half century. Vice magazine asked, is Stephen Shaw the most influential photographer of the 20th century? And the Washington Post says, Stephen Shaw is one of the most iconic and legendary American photographers of all time. Given that there is such a huge gap between the two reactions to his work, I'd like to attempt to narrow the divide between these views. Shaw was born in New York's Upper East Side as the sole son of Jewish parents who ran a handbag company. At 16, he met Andy Warhol, and instead of going off to college, he began hanging out at Wall's factory. This wasn't only a radical thing for a teenager to do, but Warhol's impact on Shaw and the work that he produced was really enormous. Warhol had a mechanical approach to making art, sculpture, and to his filmmaking. And he also had a strong pull towards reproducing the everyday. So I'm sure that this exposure gave confidence to Shaw and gave him ideas in how to pursue his own photographic vision. Shaw said in an interview, I began to see conceptually there because that's how Andy looked at the world, finding this detached pleasure in the banality of everyday things. Shaw's photographs are not conceptual in the sense that you need two pages of text to understand them. It's probably more similar to how Buddhists think about removing the persona as a witness to an experience. Um, Shaw talks about the presence of attention and the bringing of awareness to the process of making a photograph. So this is similar to how quantum physicists talk about collapsing the wave function through awareness. The quote, good artist copy, great artist steal, has been attributed to Picasso, but no one really knows who first said it. In Wall and Shaw's cases, they didn't bother to steal, they just repackaged the reality that we see in front of us in the everyday. Even though Shaw has produced a lifetime of powerful work, I'm going to concentrate on two of his essays, American Surfaces and an uncommon places so these were mainly yeah these were done in the 70s and my feeling is that they really revolutionized photography and the way we approach photography Shaw set out on a road trip in the early 70s to produce images that became um, his American Surfaces series he used a simple Raleigh 35 camera which it was an early version of the point-and-shoot. During the 60s and early 70s, art photography was almost exclusively black and white. It was dominated by stylists like Richard Avedon, Cecil Beaton, Irvin Penn, and the, the images were usually dominated by a strong central theme, or in the case of photojournalism, Henry Cartier-Bresson's split-second drama. He, he referred to it as the decisive moment. Shaw says, in American Surfaces, I was photographing almost every meal I ate, every person I met, every waiter or waitress who served me, every bed I slept in, every toilet I used, but also I was photographing streets I was driving through, buildings I would see. I would just pull over and say, okay, this is the picture I want. So that's, you can see how he approached his subject matter. It was, in a way, similar to how Instagram, we see Instagram today, um, except he brought to each photograph 
a strong awareness of, of what he was looking at. He called this project American Surfaces to kind of emphasize the surface nature of the images, which belied the kind of deeper underlying character that these images hold. Obviously not all his images were strong and captured what he wanted, but he was able to focus on the subject intensely for a very short period of time and then move on. I'm sure he compared his approach to taking photographs to how people talk, such as obviously natural, ordinary speech. He didn't want to burden his images with convention, the convention of Richard Avedon and others. He wanted to take pictures that just looked like seeing, just the flow of life and capturing, but with an intense looking. So he was exploring the space between how he sees and how he photographs, which isn't a random thing. It's a very focused thing, but he's not trying to bring a whole lot of photographic education to the images by observing strict rules like in those days putting something in the center of the frame or having the skyline in the middle of the frame was just taboo. You just didn't do that kind of thing. Shaw's work was included in exhibitions on vernacular photography uh, organized by John Zarkowski at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Zarkowski was director of photography at MoMA between 1962 and 1991. He, he was an amazing guy and it was during a time when the focus of art was on innovation and talent. He, he was one of the first people to recognize that snapshots could be a form of photographic art in their own way. I just want to demystify the term vernacular because it's one of those terms that is included in the art speak vocabulary. Um, I'm just going to read two dictionary definitions. Vernacular photography is the creation of photographs that take everyday life and common things as subjects. Vernacular photographs are types of accidental art in that they are often unintentionally artistic. Another dictionary says an umbrella term used to distinguish fine art photographs from those made by non-artists for a huge range of purposes, including commercial, scientific, forensic, governmental and personal. So what they're saying is the banality of it allows you to look at it in a way that expands your awareness of everyday things. On another point, um, there's a book written by Mal Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers, and he talks about, obviously, people who've really made it, the outliers within any art form or business or anything, really. If There's a number of factors, but luck and timing play a huge part. So if Shaw had emerged 10 years earlier or 10 years later, or there wasn't an unconventional thinker like uh, Zorkowski at MoMA, perhaps his images would have, have not made an impact because no one would have seen what he was trying to do and understood what he, he was trying to do. And he could have been another one of those photographers whose work lands up in the bottom drawer of the cupboard. Once Shaw had finished his American Surfaces project, he secured a back room at the Light Gallery. At the time, this was in 1972, it was one of the most important and probably the best photography gallery in New York on Upper Madison Avenue. What he did was plaster three walls with a tightly knit grid of small glossy prints Bar barraging his audience with a uh, photographic wallpaper of these seemingly amateurish color snapshots. Now, if he was trying to be arty at that time, he would have 
taken one or two out and made them big and given it a sense that this is this is something beyond the ordinary but he wanted to emphasize that which it's you, it's a very brave thing to do because you you're not you're not trying to hide the fact that they are everyday photographs you you in fact emphasizing that point the reviews were not flattering at all the title of the review in village voice the village voice read american yawn irish whale so that could have killed most photographers ambition and certainly they would have given up their train of thought but he doubled down on his exp exploration of the commonplace and then started working on his next series which was to be called Uncommon Places. That name in itself is not filled with drama. At this time he moved from his 35mm and he moved up to a logic format and then up to an 8x10 camera. This is a really large format camera that produces really high detailed images. It uses sheets of film that are 52 times the size of a 35 millimeter frame so you can see that you would have access to so much more detail within the images because of the highly detailed content he was able to include many smaller details that if you're working on a 35 millimeter camera you'd have to go closer to focus this is possibly one of the most obvious examples you get this little boy he's breathing onto a window as he looks out onto the road and if you wanted to show that photograph using a 35 mm camera you would have to get close and that might or might not be an okay photograph but what he's done here is show you what life is like in this corner of a city and once your eye starts moving around you suddenly find this little boy breathing onto the window and even though that is a strong pull it isn't the whole photograph and it isn't all that Shaw is saying he's what he is saying is here's a scene and if you really look you're going to find amazingly interesting things obviously now there's a nostalgic quality to these images but don't be fooled he wasn't going out to look for nostalgic scenes in the early 70s this is in both the essays this is what the world looked like. The impact of these essays on photography is probably comparable to the effect that Jack Kerouac's On the Road had on literature. Kerouac wasn't creating in a vacuum. There were others from the Beat Generation at the time, including Burroughs and Ginsburg. And Shaw also had contemporaries in William Eggleston, who was instrumental with Shaw in shifting color photography into the art arena. There were also others such as Robert Adams and the other new topographic photographers who were exploring man-altered landscapes and there's similarities to their approaches and to Shaw's but Shaw for me the combination of color and new topographic Okay, I better explain what new topographic is. It's quite a deadpan look at man-altered landscapes. It's a bit dystopian. It was only towards the early 80s that people really caught on to what he was doing and understa understood his visual language and how he was trying to communicate and what he was trying to communicate. But still, it took till 2017 before Shaw received his first major survey exhibition in New York. So it goes to show that there was a lot of resistance to what he did. I was going to include in this video how his work has influenced my own work, but I think what I'll do is do a follow-up video. So in summary, if you're ever confronted by a Stephen Shaw image in a book or in a museum, don't panic because there isn't a central focus that you need to discover. There's no de um, definitive message. Rather, take a deep breath, drop shoulders, 
And it's the banal nature of his scenes that allow you to wander around and see the complexity within the image. As, um, as mentioned earlier, Shaw says, I wanted to take pictures that felt as natural as speaking. That's all you have to do. Thanks. Is it over yet? Yes, it is good. It really is. What are they? Well... and find out what the future holds in store. Is it over yet?